a uh, very good evening uh, to you all uh, dear brothers uh, in christ uh, so we thank our lord and our savior jesus christ uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, his wonderful words of life uh, especially from the bible so today as a beginning of the studies <clears throat> today we will be studying about the bible see the word uh, bible is from the greek word called as uh, biblos so the meaning of it it is a book so what book uh, is it called if you see it is called as the veda of truth therefore in uh, various languages uh, the bible is called as satya veda <clears throat> that means it is the veda where only truth is recorded and it is one of the oldest book ever printed or ever published in this world it's really in more than 4000 years old is the only oldest book that is existing in the world so okay <clears throat> what does the bible have if you see the bible is composed of 66 books old testament has 39 books and the new testament has 27 books so total it is composed of 66 books this bible god has used nearly 40 different authors <clears throat> in various times to record uh, the things that are mentioned in the Bible for over a period of uh, 1,700 years. And how they have written, if you see, it is all written by the motivation of the God's Holy Spirit and the direction of uh, influence of uh, God's Holy Spirit. We can read uh, that one in Second Peter 1.21. <clears throat> one of you can read the Bible, Second Peter 1.21 from English Bible. Second Peter 1.21 For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God is paid as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. See, the prophecy of old, you see, uh, of older time, it did not come like that. It is uh, by when the holy men of God were moved by the Holy Spirit. It is under the influence of the Holy Spirit that they are written. Therefore, the Bible is a very unique book, dear brethren. So, you see, the once when the printing press was invented in 1454 uh, AD by Jonas Gutenberg, uh, the first, uh, you see, the page that was published, uh, the first uh, book that was ever published uh, is the Bible. Since then, the Bible is the most printed book. Uh, you see, the Bible is the most sold book. The Bible is the only book that is translated in all the languages of the world. Uh, there is no language that is the Bible is not there at all. So Bible is there in all the languages. And the Bible is the most sold book. It is the most purchased book. It is the most read book. By all the people from various categories, you see, they buy the Bible and they read it the most. But unfortunately, you know, the most, you see, the misunderstood book is also the Bible. Why? Why Bible is called the most misunderstood book? Dear Bhutran, if you see, the Bible is read and used in such various ways. Therefore, the Bible is uh, uh, read in different ways. So what are the ways? You see, when uh, people don't get sleep, they usually read the Bible and uh, tend to go to sleep. You see, many people, uh, you see, believe now, many people tell, oh, if you're not getting sleep, just read the Bible, you get a good uh, nap. You see, therefore, you see, uh, the Bible is used in such ways. Still, uh, some people, they don't even read the Bible. They just uh, have a particular verse uh, that is uh, written for a particular day on a calendar. They just go and read that verse and uh, feel satisfied uh, telling that, oh, this is our daily manna which God has given us. But still, uh, other Christians are there who are quite better than them. You see, they read the manna, the book uh, that is published for the Christians each and every day. A paragraph is written about the Bible text. Uh, and they read uh, and uh, they believe that uh, this is the manna which God has given us for the entire day. God has spoken to us. <clears throat> okay. If uh, we read the Bible, you see, daily Old Testament two chapters and New Testament, uh, you see, uh, one chapter, the Bible can be completely covered you see in just a period of uh, one year in just one year period the entire bible can be completely read but even then you see dear brethren 
there are a lot of denominations in this world. Uh, you see, Catholic, Orthodox, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. You see, uh, uh, various uh, denominations are there. Why? If there is only one Bible, why various denominations? It is because the Bible is the most misunderstood but in the way they have understood it. Okay. How? Like, for example, let us read one verse uh, in Matthew 19, chapter 23 and 24. Uh, let us read Matthew 19, chapter 23 and 24. Uh, Subindar Rajbadar, is it possible for you to read the Bible? Can you read the Bible? Uh, Rajbadar, can you read the Bible? Do you have English Bible with you? I don't have English Bible. Okay. Uh, Vivek Shankar. Vivek brother, do you have English Bible? Okay then. Brother Ashish will read. You can just refer it in your uh, Nepali Bible brother. Okay brother? Uh, Matthew 19, 23, 24. Hmm. Then said... Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Very I say unto you that the rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. See, this verse says, mm. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. You see? The eye of a needle is a place where we just uh, pierce uh, the thread. You see, how is it possible uh, that a camel can go through the needle side while it is very difficult for the thread itself to go? You see, what is the meaning of this one? Is Jesus making some sort of joke? How do we understand these verses? How do we understand the Bible? Let us read one more verse. Genesis 2nd chapter 16 and 17, brother. Genesis 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Okay. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eat thereof thou shalt surely die. See? God said to Adam that uh, you shall not eat the tree. You shall not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. Okay. Did Adam eat the fruit? Yes, Adam ate the fruit. But did Adam die the same day? If you see, no. Adam did not die the same day as told by God. But he continued to live for a period of 930 years. Let us read that verse in Genesis 5, 5, brother. Genesis 5, 5. Any other brother who can read it in English also can read. Not an issue. Okay, Ashish, brother. Please continue. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Very good. And all the days that Adam lived. Huh? You see? For how many years? 930 years and he died. So, Adam did not uh, die the same day, dear brother. He lived for a period of 930 years. Uh. Then, uh, uh, did God tell a lie? You see, then uh, what did God tell to Adam? That you, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall die. But this one, many people simply say, tell, uh, uh, you see, that uh, Adam died spiritually on a fleshly he died uh, 930 years, but the day he ate the fruit thereof, spiritually he was dead. Uh, okay, let us read what the Bible says. Whether Adam was dead uh, spiritually, can he die spiritually? If uh, Adam has to die spiritually, dear brethren, first of all, <coughs> Adam has to be created spiritually. Then only Adam can die, you see, uh, spiritually. Until uh, somebody is uh, created spiritually, how can uh, somebody die, you see, spiritually? Let us see about the creation of Adam, how Adam was created. Let us read 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 46 and 47, brother. Uh, 
<laughs> how did that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and after what that is which is spiritual the first man is of the earth or the the second man is the lord from heaven okay ah, he says the first was not spiritual but the second man was spiritual who is the first man who is the second man he says in verse 47 the first man is of the earth earthly adam was created from the dust of the ground he is the first man he was not created spiritually but the second man is the lord from heaven the lord jesus christ from heaven so he was the one who came you see or he was in a spiritual body uh, you see, then he came. Uh, uh, you see, therefore, Adam was not created spiritually to die spiritually. Then what is the meaning of this verse? Uh, where God tells, in the day you eat the fruit thereof, you shall surely die. What is the meaning of this verse? How do we understand the Bible? Okay. Let us read the third question. Matthew 13, chapter verse 12, brother. Read, brother, please. Matthew, Matthew 13, 12, brother. Matthew 13, chapter 12, brother. Matthew 13, chapter 12, brother. Okay, Ashish, brother, I think you can continue. For whoever had, for whosoever had, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he had. You see, this verse says, Whosoever at, to whom he shall be given. And whosoever, at, you see, doesn't have, even that also which is having, shall be taken off with him. So, whosoever has only to him shall be given, and he shall have more. And whosoever doesn't have, even that which he has shall be taken off with him. What is the meaning of this verse, dear brethren? You see, uh, is this justice to give only those who are having and to take away from them who doesn't have even a little bit also? How fair is it? Uh, then how do we understand the Bible? Uh? Therefore, to understand this Bible, you see, the most misunderstood book, we need to have the proper key. We need to have the proper codes. Then whom do we ask the codes and the key for? You see, we should ask our Lord Jesus Christ. What did Jesus say? Matthew 7, 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. So if we ask our Lord, seek it in our prayer and search it in the Bible and knock at its heart's door in prayer, it shall be open unto us. The scripture shall be open. <clears throat> so, first of all, we need to understand that the Bible is a log book God. So to understand the Bible, we need a proper key. Now what is the key? Which is the proper key to understand the Bible? You see, there are three important keys to understand the Bible. Which is the first key? The first key given to us in Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah 34, 16. Isaiah 34, 16. I read with that. Isaiah 34, 16. <clears throat> Take you out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want or mate. For my mouth it had commanded. In his spirit it had gathered them. Mm. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. That is the first key. Where should we search the Bible? You see, we should search the Bible. You see, for all the questions. If you have any question, where do we search the answer? It is not in Google or anything. The Bible, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Search in the Bible. None shall fail. All the questions shall have the answer. None shall want or mate. What is the meaning of mate? Mate means what? You see? Huh? The proper, proper companion. For the north, south is the companion. For east, west is the companion. For negative, positive is the companion. Similarly, for a question... Answer is the companion. Answer is the mate. For as a boy and a girl are mate. Similarly, for a question, answer is the mate. Therefore, the Bible says, huh? none shall want her mate. All the questions in the Bible, the answer will be given in the Bible itself. 
You see, how do we gather it? The verse says, the spirit that gathered it. God's Holy Spirit. So God's Holy Spirit, we can gather the scriptures and understand. So this is the first key. Okay, which is the next key? Let us read Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, brother. Isaiah 28, chapter, brother, 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the bread. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Very good. You see, whom shall God teach the Bible? Knowledge. Whom shall I make understand the doctrine? Those who are weaned from the milk, milk doctrines. Those who desire to eat strong Bible doctrines, they should be taught how? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. They won't be taught at a time, slowly, line by line, line by line, step by step, they will be taught. Here a little, there a little. What is this meaning, here a little, there a little? You see, a question will be given somewhere else. The answer for it will be given somewhere else. So here a little, there a little. We need to search the scriptures and synchronize and read. We are going to see the sample for this one just in a few minutes. Okay. Which is the third key. The third key is given to us in 2 Timothy 2.15, brother. 2 Timothy 2.15, brother. <clears throat> Study to so by self-approved unto God, a workman that needeth not not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that did not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Rightly the word of God has to be applied. You see, proper scriptures has to be applied in a proper way. If you apply the verses improper way, then you have misinterpretation. Therefore, to interpretations to be correct, you should be Rightly divided. What is the meaning of rightly divided? We'll just see the example. See, we saw three questions. First question is what? Huh? A camel entering the needle's eye. How can a camel enter the needle's eye? Well, the thread itself is very difficult to go. So what did Jesus say? Actually, Jesus, whenever he mentioned something, he mentioned about the natural things in Israel. He was actually speaking here about the city of Jerusalem. See, city of Jerusalem was a fortress city. And this fortress uh, had uh, 12 gates. About that one, it is given in Nehemiah, book of Nehemiah, 12 gates are there. And these gates used to be closed by 6 p.m. Why? Because those days there was no light. After 6 p.m., it would be dark and the thieves can easily come inside and you see and uh, create problems inside the city. Therefore, these uh, <clears throat> the doors uh, were actually closed. By, you see, evening. Then how do the people travel if they want to go inside the city in night? For that one, you see, next to this, uh, you see, inside this big gate, uh, you see, there was a small, you see, a door. It was just a six by three, a small door. You see, that uh, door was called as a needle side. Today also, if you go to some big, big castles and all, we can see this one. You see, we have this one, no? That small door is called a needle's eye. You can go exactly one person can go and come. You see, Jesus was referring to this, uh, you see, door, which is called as needle's eye. Now, what has it got to relate with the camel? You see, in olden days, the rich person used to travel on a camel, while the poor people used to travel on a donkey. Hence, Jesus came to Jerusalem on a donkey. And when the rich person used to go on a journey with a, on a camel, he used to never come empty-handed. You see, he used to bring a lot of load on the camel. By the time he came to Jerusalem, if it was 6 o'clock and the doors would be closed, it would be very difficult to go through. You see, the small door. So what he has to do? The rich person has to unload all the camel of all the goods, then uh, transport the camel to that needle side, and go that side, and again take all the luggage and put it on the camel and go. Will a rich person do that one? No. That is what Jesus is saying. The, he, the camel will go in the needle side, but uh, for a rich man to go through the needle side, it's very, very difficult to you. Jesus was telling this way. This is how we read the Bible. 
you see here a little here a little so the scriptures rightly dividing the word of god the three key supply now let us see the second question second question had i made the fruit he did not die the same day why he lived for 130 years why how is it the answer for this question is not given in the entire old testament it is given in the new testament where it is given in 2nd Peter 3rd chapter 8 verse. Let us read the number 2nd Peter 3 8 brother. But beloved, be it, not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Uh -huh. A day with the Lord is a thousand years, and thousand years is one day. Who told to Adam not to eat the fruit? It was Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, who told Adam not to eat the forbidden, you see, fruit. And for Jesus, one day means how many years? A thousand years. So he was telling in the day, in the day of thousand years, in the period of thousand years, you will die. Hence, none of the man lived about thousand years. Everybody died within thousand years, dear brother. Therefore, this is how we read the Bible. Here a little, there a little. Genesis little, second chapter, third chapter, eight verse, there a little. You see, so, so scriptures reach and every question of the Bible, the Bible gives the answer. Bible is the own dictionary for the Bible. Okay, let us come to the third question. What did Jesus say? Whosoever has to him shall be given, and you shall have abundance. But whosoever uh, doesn't have, even that which he is having, he should be taken out from him. This is purely injustice. Uh, because somebody reading this verse uh, would just bluntly think that, uh, oh, Jesus is speaking about uh, money, blessings. If anybody is having blessings, money, wealth, God will give him more. And those who are poor, even those things will be taken out from them. Really, but then just uh, think, uh, has Jesus ever in the scriptures uh, spoken about money, wealth? Uh, no, nowhere has our Lord spoken about wealth. Uh. And how come Jesus can speak about wealth in this verse? Uh? What is the meaning of this verse? Uh? We need to read a verse before we'll get the answer there only. Real little, there little. Search the scriptures, rightly dividing the word of God. Read Matthew 13, chapter 9 and 10, brother. Matthew 13, chapter 9 and 10, brother. <clears throat> The answer is there itself. Matthew 13, chapter 9, 10, and 11. <coughs> Who had ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Very good, Buddha. See, he says, he that has ears, let him Yeah, You see, so Jesus was speaking about the ears of understanding and eyes of understanding. And, you see, it says in verse 10 and 11, were well, you speaking parables? What did Jesus reply? He said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of heaven. You see, but unto them it is not given. Why it is not given? Why the secrets of the Bible is not revealed to them? Why only to you? The answer only Jesus says in 12th verse, whosoever has to him shall be given. So he is speaking about whosoever has interest, ears to ear, eyes to see, to him more shall be given. But whosoever doesn't have that eyes of understanding, ears of understanding, even that which he has, Little bit of interest also should be taken up. This is how the Bible has to be read. Here a little, dear a little. Searching the scriptures. You see, rightly dividing the word of God. Therefore, dear brethren, <clears throat> so how to study the Bible? See, here we teach how to study the Bible, not how to read the Bible. Not a difference between reading and studying the Bible. So, the first point we need to keep is that while studying the Bible, there are 10 methods to understand the Bible. Which are they? The first one is a direct language. The Bible has direct languages. You see? Direct languages is what? The Bible says that Jesus wept at Lazarus' tomb. Jesus wept means wept. There is no inner or in-depth meaning in that verse. It's a direct language. It's the first language. The Bible has so many direct languages. 
The second one is the symbolic language. Just now what we read about a camel passing through the needle side, that's a symbolic language. That's not a literal language, that's a symbolic language, dear brethren. So, huh? that has to be read in a symbolic way to understand the Bible. Huh? And the third language in the Bible is a parabolic language. Jesus spoke so many parables, more than 30 parables he spoke. Each and every parable has a meaning. So how do we take the uh, quotes from the Bible? It's all taken from the Bible itself, dear friend. Each and every meaning has to be taken from the Bible. The parable of the sower, Jesus said, no. The seed went and fell on the, you see, various grounds. It went on the roadside. The, you see, the sparrows, the birds of the air came and lifted it up. You see, it fell on a thorny ground. It fell on a rock. It fell on a good ground. All these things are comparison to our heart condition. The seed is the word of God. It fell into the roadside. The Satan came and picked it up. They say, this is what the meaning. Jesus explains each and every meaning. Dear brethren. So this parabolic language has to be studied in a parabolic way only. Next, the fourth way is the Bible language is type and antitype. What is this type and antitype? Means the Bible has so many Stories in the Old Testament, which actually signifies the things which are fulfilled in the New Testament. Like for example, Abraham sacrificed his only son Isaac. Now what does it signify? This shows how, you see, Jesus died for us. How God so loved the world that he gave his only son for us. So that's the type and anti-type. You see, all the things in the Old Testament signify things in the New Testament. Let us read Colossians 2nd chapter 16 and 17, brother. Please read Colossians 2nd chapter 16 and 17. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. See? All the things in the Old Testament you see the days, the moon, the Sabbath, the sacrifices. What does the Bible say? He said they are the shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. Jesus Christ. All the things in the tabernacle, the various sacrifices. What does it signify, dear brethren? It all signifies something in Christ. Nutrition. We are going to study all these things in the coming days in a very detailed manner. The fifth way, the fifth method to study the Bible is dreams and visions. The Bible has so many dreams. So many visions. Pharaoh saw a dream. Joseph saw a dream. Daniel saw a dream. So what is the meaning of these dreams? It has to be studied from the Bible itself. You see, each and every vision, each and every dream in the Bible has got its own meaning. So this one we are going to study. This is one of the methods. And the sixth method is a dispensational method. What is the meaning of dispensational method? Like uh, we have a past tense, present tense and future tense. Similarly, some verses uh, apply for the past. Some verses apply for the present. Still some verses apply for the future. Like for example, marriage. In the past or when the law was there, man could have multiplied, man could have married multiple times. Multiple marriages were allowed. But when Jesus came, he changed it. He said, <clears throat> he's going to marry only once. You're not going to divorce your wife. That's the present. But what does the Bible say in the future? In the future, the Bible says there's going to be no marriage at all. The marriage concept itself is not there. You see. So, the past, the present and the future. So, let us read a few verses. Matthew 99. Steve, good. You got your audio. Uh, are you good at reading in English? Are you comfortable? Would you like to read? Uh, I have no English Bible. I have Nepali Bible. So. Okay, okay, okay. Steve, Steve, brother. I'm uh, speaking to brother Stephen. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yeah, brother. I'm able to hear you. Very good, uh, brother. Can you uh, read the Bible? Like... Oh, tell me. Which? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, in fact, I was fiddling around. I just got connected. Thank you, thank you. Not a issue, but uh, first time it will happen like that. Not a problem. Can you read Matthew nineteen nine, brother? Is it is it okay? Yes, 
Uh, you have the Bible with you, Stephen, brother? Okay. Uh, Ashish, brother, I think you can read. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Somebody can. And maybe the next time I will come in. Oh, okay. sure, sure, sure. No problem, bro. You I'm sorry. I, I'm, yeah, because I got uh, tangled with the uh, audio connection and all this. No problem. Just now no I got problem. connected, okay? No problem. Bro. Okay. You can continue listening, please. Yeah, Matthew 19, you are saying? Nine. Matthew 19, nine. One minute, please. Uh, Ashish, brother. Okay, brother. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it but it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery, and who is married to her, which is put away, do commit adultery. You see, Bible says uh, that is going to commit adultery. So now in the gospel age. A man can marry only once. But what about the future? Future, what does the Bible say? Read Matthew 22-30, brother. Matthew 22-30. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. In future, there is no marriage at all. So this is the dispensational truth, and the seventh language in the Bible is the prophetic language. There are a lot of prophecies in the Bible. So those things have to be read in a, such a particular way. Like for example, uh, let us read Genesis 3.15, brother. Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. You see? God says, I shall put enmity between thee and the woman. Between the serpent and the woman. And the serpent's seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. And the serpent shall bruise his heel. What is the meaning of this one? It's not a little statement that the serpent will come and it will, you see, <coughs> bruise the heel. And the serpent's seed will bruise the literal head of the serpent. This is not God meaning. This is a prophetic language. So we need to understand a prophetic language in a prophetic way. So you see, dear brother, this is one of the way. And the eighth way is to have the contextual study. See, before coming to one conclusion, we need to see what are the verse particularly says. Like for example, Matthew 13 chapter, we read 12th verse. What is the meaning of it? We just now, you see, read the verse from beginning from verse 9. Then we came to clear clarity. This verse is not speaking about money or blessings at all. It is speaking about understanding of Bible, the teaching the word of God, understanding it. So this is the context study. The ninth one is the chronological method. That means Bible has so many dates, so many times. Like for example, uh, today the scientists say that man was created uh, million, millions of years before. But what does the Bible say? The Bible says and gives the exact date from the creation of man till now. Now that one has to be studied in a particular way. Also, the Bible has various dates, given, various times is given, various times prophecies are given. Those has to be studied in that particular way. That was the ninth way of studying the Bible. And the last and the tenth and a very important way of studying the Bible is the topical way. The topical way is that you choose a topic from the Bible, collect the entire verses on the particular topic and read it synchronize it and read it properly, understand it and study it properly. Like for example, the birth of Jesus, is it given in a single book? Where he was born, where he grew and where, uh, uh, you see, uh, he was baptized and uh, where he began his ministry and where he died on the cross, is it given in a single book? No. It is given in the book of Zechariah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, various books are there. You need to accumulate all those verses and uh, those are jumbled. You need to uh, you see, harmonize it and synchronize it and 
read properly. This is the very, very important study. This is what we are going to do in the coming weeks. We are going to study a topical study of the Bible, subject by subject, here a little, there a little, very in-depth manner. So how do we correct <coughs> these verses? Do we need to go to the library? No, dear brethren. Today, we have the blessed, uh, you see, opportunity to have concordance online. You see, we can gather all these verses and study in a systematic way. Dear brethren, in this way, if you study, as Jesus told, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Definitely, we will be set up free of all the doubts, all the questions in the Bible. If you dear brethren, just revise uh, today's uh, points. Uh, what did we see? The three important keys to understand the Bible. Which is the first key? Search the scriptures. You see? Isaiah 34, 16. The second key is here a little, there a little. Isaiah 28, uh, 9 and 10. Third key is rightly dividing the word of God. 2 Timothy 2, 15. And the 10 methods to study the Bible is the first one, you see, direct method. Second one, symbolic method. Third one, parabolic method. Fourth one, type and antitype. Fifth one, dreams and visions. Sixth one, dispensation and method. Seventh one, prophetic. Eighth one, contextual uh, study. Ninth one, chronological method. And the last and tenth and very important one is a topical study. Dear brethren, hope uh, this was a blessing to you that you uh, understood so many things. We will be sharing <coughs> you uh, the YouTube link. Please subscribe to the channel and you can uh, have the chat with us. Any questions you have, you can please uh, uh, discuss with us on uh, WhatsApp chat or you can call us. Uh, any queries you have, we will be, of course, always free to answer all your questions and all. So next week, we'll meet at the same time, Thursday, 8 p.m. India time. If anybody is having any questions, they can definitely ask. Anybody, any questions?